For the second episode of the series, let's ramp it up and nerf an even more difficult level than Stereo Madness. Generation Red- Nah, 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 I'm kidding, of course. Now for real though, let's take a look through back on track and see what unspeakable atrocities Robtop has hidden in the level, and we'll try to fix them. The first half of the level is pretty easy. At least that is what you've been brainwashed to think. Do you remember playing this level for the first time? Remember how difficult it was? So here we are at the beginning of Back on Track. It's a beautiful level. You got some pink stuff and everything, some spikes, but but then you got then you got one of these bad boys over here. You got one of these. These actually make you go very high, but like if you're a new player, you don't really know that. And so if you don't know to hit it on purpose, then you're going to try to jump over it and then bam, you're 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 a dead man. So we're we're going to get rid of these. And I think this really gives the player a fair opportunity to be able to like, you know, bounce on it first without repercussion, you know, and uh, hopefully this will make it a little easier. Another thing people probably don't know about Back on Track is that Robtop actually created a dash spike. But anyways, after this first bounce pad, we got we got a double spike, which is it, it's pretty respectable and everything. We might come back and touch up on this later, but it's fine for now. Next up, we got another jump pad scenario. This this one is pretty intricate. I'm not going to lie. He expects you to know how to run into this thing, land on this and then not fall to your death. And I think that's pretty unfair. I think you should be able to fall right here because I'm bad. Okay, now we're talking on this part. This part is more like the Stereo Madness version, except you also fall and die right here. I still hate vertical lines, so we're just gonna get rid of these as well. This triple spike is a little weird. I would- I'm just gonna delete two. If you still somehow manage to die on this spike, I, I don't think you should be playing the game, man. This next part is very infamous. It introduces already fake outs for these jump pads. I think we're just going to replace them with probably just one purple one, to be honest. It, it introduces the player to different variations of the jump pad, while also like not completely KOing them if they do run into it. I do not like spikes, and I also don't like vertical blocks, and I also don't like squares, so that's gonna have to go. This may come as a surprise, but I'm actually okay with this setup right now, which is fine. So you land over here, you, you jump and land over here, and that's fine. You're going along, and then BAM! You got a hole here. Um, yeah, that's not gonna work, brother. That's not gonna work. We're just gonna, we're just gonna put this here. Most two stars at this point are basically auto levels anyways, so I think this is acceptable. And then you got more staircases of death over here, which were first showcased on Stereo Madness multiple times, actually. Uh, these, there's also some vertical lines. Uh, I don't really appreciate that too much. I'm fine with this jump pad right here. Obviously, no one is going to jump into these spikes down here, but asking the player to immediately jump right after that is a little weird. Not gonna lie, Robtop was a little weird for that one. So we're just gonna do this. Bing bong, bing bong. There you go. As a little award, I'm gonna give the player a nice little key. It does absolutely nothing. I think the player deserves it at this point. Just a nice little key to just have. Maybe hang on the shelf or a wall or something. Uh, you got a jump pad right here. You're going along. Bada bing, bada boom. That's fine. Uh, if you jump here, you're dead. So I'm just gonna get rid of these spikes right here. This part right here is a little weird. You gotta jump over the spike and then like purposefully fall down. In most cases in this game, when you fall down, you go boom. That, that kind of defeats the purpose of like everything that the game has taught us at this point. I kind of dislike that inconsistency, so we're just gonna add some ramps and some blocks right there and call it a day. Moving along, we got another jump right here, a little reverse staircase of death. These are non-fatal, a pretty cool gimmick. Since they're non-fatal, we'll keep them in, but you do have to jump at the end of it, which is a little weird. If you're gonna have a non-fatal staircase of death, you, you, gotta, you gotta be consistent with it. That's just bad game design if you ask me. This coin right here, this is a problem. This is actually a problem. So what we're gonna do, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna do something cool and just put this right here to uh, to elevate the gameplay, okay? We're just, we're just gonna put this right here. Nothing is happening here. I'm just awarding the player again once more for their efforts. You know, I think everyone deserves a nice shiny silver coin every once in a while. This next jump is pretty steep. Steep is basically vertical, which is also something that is wrong with this part. We're gonna get rid of the vertical line. And we're also going to add a nice elevation of rams right here. And just to make sure the player gets there, we're going to just add some more right there as well. And then they, they should boing right up here just fine. The level gets a little scary right here. And that's because these platforms don't actually have bases. They don't have foundations or suspenders. It, I mean, they do, but they're not connected to anything, you know? And I think that that makes the game pretty unrealistic. And I always love realism in games. So we're just gonna, we're gonna add some bases, you know? It, it, I think it'll make the level a little less scary. 
a little less scary and it'll also make the game more realistic as well and i think that's very important but yeah that leads us to the next part of the level the ship part Roberto was nice enough this time around to save a game mode switch until 50% through the level, but that doesn't mean it isn't absurdly difficult. The coin is basically a straight fly, there are no ramps, and I hate triangles, so this is already not a good look. The ship part starts out pretty respectably. There's absolutely nothing. The player gets free roam to do whatever they want until like 3 seconds in and then Robtop throws like triangles at us and that's weird. I think he forgot that sharp edges like this kill the players. Player deaths equals not enjoyable for the game, which lowers the game retention, which tells the app stores that the game is bad, and so Robtop makes less money by putting these easy deaths right here. And it's just, it, it really just doesn't make sense to me. This next part has the coin, and for experienced players, this coin it might be a little easy. It's not very easy for anyone because it is a straight fly, but for new players, it is absolutely terrible. You got a straight fly to get this coin. This is insane, dude. All Robtop had to do to make this even remotely enjoyable is add some ramps, like literally everywhere. Oh yeah, and there's two vertical lines right here. I don't know what Rob Top's obsession with vertical lines are, but um, it, it, it's kind of embarrassing. At this point, I'm fine with not having ramps everywhere, but um, I think it's a little unreasonable to force the player to click and hold for more than a second at a time. So we'll add ramps to the first three. We'll, we'll ask the player to hold for like a second, but then th then they can rest their fingers a little bit. This next part, the player just has to continue resting their fingers, you know, enjoying the level. We will leave these vertical lines, but I think they are an integral part of the gameplay, at least according to Robtop, because he puts them literally everywhere. We're going to kind of inverse this a little bit. We're going to put three at the bottom this time. This will get the player used to not relying too much on pattern recognition when it comes to levels. The last part of the ship is more straight fly. Um, some players are like, oh, maybe it's not that bad, you know? There's no spikes on the bottom here and there's no spikes on the top here. But to that, I say not. Okay, we're, we're gonna help out the player a little bit more here. I, I, I think it's completely unreasonable for Robtop to add that many spikes that close together. We'll let him have four on the top and bottom though. Um, but once you think you're safe, he has more straight fly with these vertical lines. I really don't understand even the point of these right here other than to make the level more difficult. So we're just gonna get rid of these and move on to the next part of the level. For the last stretch of the level, we're back in the cube game mode. If you thought the last part of Stereo Manus was bad, now we have those yellow boing alongs we gotta watch out for. So immediately after you start, Robtop thrusts you into some gameplay, which doesn't sound unreasonable until you realize that, I mean, he immediately thrusts you in. You got, you got two spikes you gotta worry about right here. We're gonna make that one spike. Uh, you got another spike after that. We're gonna make that a zero spike. You got two vertical lines right here. That is terrible. That is awful. Anyways, those are gone. You're jumping along. Uh, two jumps right here. That's fine. That's fine. You drop once, another jump. But wait, vertical lines. We gotta get rid of those. We gotta get rid of them. Um, you got you got some ledges right here. Don't like them at all. Frankly, do not like them. We're just gonna we're just gonna do this. And so you're going along. Two spikes. That's fine, we will allow it just this once. Vertical line, never, never, ever, ever. You boing along across these two. Don't like the fact you gotta jump again right after. You jump over this, land on the jump pad. That's fine, jump over the four spikes. And then you got these things. These things are so weird. Am I supposed to drop? Maybe, or maybe I'm supposed to time it and jump right here. I don't know, you don't know, and that is why no one has to know because we're deleting. We're deleting all of it, even the spikes. We'll keep the pillars because we need some gameplay here. Uh, jump on this platform, jump on this platform. That's fine. This is obviously unrealistic, so we're going to get rid of this and add uh, support foundations right here to keep this floating up. So yeah, next up, we got this, we got this. You jump around and then wait. Wait, was I supposed to drop there to get this coin? That, that's interesting because it looks like the coin is still dangerous with all these decorative spikes right here. That's kind of weird, man. That's kind of weird. That's kind of distracting, if you ask me. If they do decide to take this top route, I'm going to delete the spike. Anyways, moving on. We got another spike right here. That's fine. Two more one spikes. I'm fine with one spikes. I think they can get a little much sometimes, but honestly, we're so close to the end. I think one final challenge is enough to like kind of push the player to the to the very end, you know? Moving on, got some more singular spikes. Kind of weird. I don't like how this four spikes kind of hug in the player right here. So we're going to raise this up just a little bit. We're going to raise it up just a little bit. Uh, moving on, two spikes. That's fine. We're getting so close to the end here. I think some challenge is good. 
the player is obviously very anxious at this point. They're at the cusp of beating back on track finally after hundreds of thousands of attempts. Bridges are pretty cool. I'm actually a big bridge guy, so we're just going to add it all the way to the very end. And then there you go. After a few more tweaks and polish, this is the finished result.